Okay guys, we're going to make a winter inner cover. And what that consists of is insulation. It's gonna be a little bit deeper. It's gonna have a top entrance. And then we're going to stick hard candy in here. It's gonna let the bees eat up the candy if they run out of stores for winter. So consider this, your bees are hunkering down for winter. They're around their brood in the bottom box. Then they're gonna start working their way up as the brood emerges, they're gonna get after resources. Queen's gonna slow down laying in the middle of winter because you can't get more resources. Uh, supply doesn't equal demand, you know? So she kind of stops, they start moving up, they're eating all the resources. What happens when they eat all their resources? Well, you'll be in good shape because they'll reach this inner cover. They're gonna start eating all the hard candy. They'll be able to go in and out once uh, you get some warmer days in January, because that's when they should be eating this, and then you're good to go. So if the bottom entrance gets blocked for some reason, they got the top. They'll also have the hard candy to uh, take all that moisture out of the air, and it'll soak it up a little bit. You'll also have a little bit of ventilation, so if uh, you know there's a lot of moisture going on in there, it can go out the top, and that way you have constant vent and flow. You do not want moisture hitting the top of your inner cover and dripping back down on the bees because then it freezes them then it kills them then you definitely have a blocked entrance at the bottom because there'll be twice as many bees dead you don't want that so let's get together and let's make one of these Okay, so we measured our hive box and we were at 20 inches on the long end and 13 and 7 eighths on the short end. And then I look at my template and the actual uh, strips for the inner cover are 1 and 5 eighths. Nice. Anyway, we're going to cut four strips to 1 and 5 eighths and then... I'm gonna chop them down to the 20 inches and the 13 and 7 eighths. Here you'll see me cutting strips. That is one and five eighths. And I'll cut four of those and they'll all be at 20 inches originally. And then I'm gonna take two of the 20 inch strips out of the four and cut them down to the 13 and 7 eighths. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and raise the blade of my table saw up to about half an inch. I'm gonna make sure that I'm at three eighths of an inch. Uh, for the setting of my fence is three eighths of an inch. Go ahead and push that sucker through. And I'll do that for all of them. success. So next I'm going to set it to three-fourths of an inch and I'm going to flip the piece of wood over a couple of times <laughs> and uh, I'm going to make a cut. Now what I'm doing is I'm marking the outsides of my channel. So you can see that the three-eighths of an inch is going to be on the inside and the three-eighths is on the outside there. And I'm just going to start cutting away all that wood and just ripping it down so that I now have a nice channel. Now, if you have a router table and rather just use a router, do that. So much easier. One pass, you're done.
because it's it's pine wood it's pretty soft you could do two or three passes uh, and just work up your router bit but in, in my case most people just have a table saw and that's what we're going to use next here i'm just cutting the edges of my frame essentially i like to cut uh, 45 degree angles on each edge that way i can just measure the outside of my box i cut my 45 degree angle and then i can just put all my edges together i don't have to worry about uh, doing any sort of crazy grooves in order to put uh, my frame together here and it's going to fit perfectly on top of a box because all you got to do is measure the outside and you'll see i used a piece of tape there all that's doing is uh, giving me the ability to line up my piece of wood to the same spot every single time. Boom, now we're going to make the upper entrance. And what you want to do is just grab one of your short sides. And I'll explain here in a second uh, how I set up the table saw and how far I moved the fence in order to create this upper entrance. Table saw was set to about 3 eighths of an inch and then I started at about seven and a half and I worked my way down to about six and a fourth, somewhere in there. I could have gone to six, uh, but you just kind of look at the entrance and you go, yeah, it's good or maybe a little bit bigger. It just kind of depends. For my area, an inch and a quarter uh, entrance is good enough because during the winter, it'll, it'll be a handful of bees that are coming out and using it. And I kind of want to see how uh, how much traffic comes in and out of the, the hive, especially the top. I don't want to have a huge top entrance and a lot of pests get in when it, it's not a very uh, snowy summer or when it's not a very snowy winter. Okay guys, and that's about it really. Once we get the grooves in there, you're just gonna cut your insulation, cut it about a half inch shorter uh, in both directions. So 19 and a half instead of 20, and then 13 and a fourth-ish instead of uh, 13 and seven eighths. So uh, the only thing I didn't do was cut the entrance, the top entrance, and that you can do just cut a one inch groove that's uh, three eighths of an inch deep into just one side of the short ends and you're good to go. I might still include it, who knows. Thanks for watching guys. All the materials and everything will be linked in the description. Every single piece that I use. Uh, and then if you build one, let us know. Let us know if it works out for you. If you pour hard candy in it and it leaks, let us know because it shouldn't do that. And maybe I can give you a tip on keeping it sealed but make sure you glue it together, brad nail it together, and you're good to go. I mean, look at that. That's a lot of space for hard candy. Once it solidifies, I mean, let it rest overnight, of course, and then you can plop it right on top. When do you want to plop it on top? Anytime it's under 55 to 40 degrees. It's kind of up to you because I've seen my bees flying at 55 degrees, and I, I don't want to put this thing on if they're out flying. It, it's typically when they slow down and you only see maybe... 10 every five minutes coming in and going that's not really flying to me that's them just testing the waters and then coming right back so if that's the case throw this thing on top leave it on top until it starts getting back up to 65 and that's typically january in this area you're good to go so like i said everything will be listed in the description let me know if i missed something let me know if it works for you and all you're doing is helping us the more you click like and comment and all that other jazz so the more that we do this the bigger we'll get and you guys will be right there with me i'm super excited to list more and more people at the end of the video for commenting um, i can't see who likes the video so i can't really list you so leave a comment and let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to do also, let me know that too. Winter's coming up, so I'm not going to be getting into the hives, of course. All I am going to do is be out here in the workshop building stuff. So I got uh, that studio that I'm going to be building soon, and then uh, the 
desk that's going to go in there, the cool little designs, background to the wall, stuff you guys don't care about until you see it, and then you'll be like, cool. Um, out in the apiary, we'll be doing FLIR videos for the winter. I'm going to do some endoscoping so that you can see what the bees actually look like. Are they in a cluster? Are they spread out? And then um, just whatever you guys really want, want to see. So let us know. Thanks. <laughs> Come on, ching.